this is Jana Smakula for simonsaysstamp.com and I'm excited to share several simple friendship cards and a fun two-color background inking technique using a couple stamps, dyes, and inks from Simon. So the idea is very simple. Use more than one color of ink to ink up a background stamp. Of course, you can use three or even four colors if you'd like. I'll be using just two colors in this video and I'll show you different ways you can apply ink to the stamp for a different look and result. So first method of applying two colors of ink is by using a little sponge dauber. I find this method to be my most favorite. So I'm going to use my lightest color first and going to ink up an area that is slightly smaller than my card base. And I also don't want to have a perfectly inked image. I want imperfections in my background. So I'm going to randomly ink my background stamp using Duckling ink. And I know it's hard to see where the ink is on the stamp, but if you tilt the stamp in the light, it starts to shine. So that kind of helps you to tell where the ink has already been applied to. Next, going to add my second color, Willow, and I'm using my green dabber for this and adding ink where I don't have any. And I'm also adding green a bit over yellow, just so that the colors mix in a few spots there. Going to place my white cardstock panel on top and transfer the ink onto the paper and voila! Our first double inked background is ready. I'm loving the variation of color here and also the softness. Now, because I used an ink dubber, you can sort of see the circles on the background from the dubber. You need to know where to look for them, but you can definitely spot them on the background. I don't mind that, but if it bugs you, I have another way, another method of doing this double inked background that's actually a little bit faster. I'm going to quickly clean my stamp and move on to my next color combo. So I'm going to use a combination of an ink pad and a dubber to apply ink this time. The length of the ink pad is about as wide as I want my inked area to be. So I'm using the ink pad and inking the stamp going from top to bottom in a straight line. I am wiggling the ink pad a little bit on the stamp to avoid having just straight lines on my stamped image. So my first color has been applied and unlike our first inking option, we added yellow to the entire area. We don't have any uninked sections that we will be applying the second color over. No, we'll be applying the second color directly over the first one and that will result in colors slightly mixing together. I'm going to use the high dive as my second color for this background and going to apply it with a dauber. So I'm adding the blue onto my background, going lighter in some sections and darker in other and placing my paper on top and stamping. I find it easier to place cardstock on top of the large stamp rather than flip it and have the paper sit on the table and place the stamp on top. So I'm pressing down with my fingers and voila, my second background is ready. It is very different from the first one. The yellow here, because it was applied directly from an ink pad and not with a dauber, is much more intense and you don't have that soft look that we have on our first background. The second one is just as pretty, it's just a little different. Now let's create a third one and use yet another method to apply ink onto our stamp. Once again, I'm starting with my yellow color and going directly to my stamp with my ink pad. Again, wiggling it a little bit to soften the edges. And now I'm using the Hollyhock ink pad and adding ink to some sections again directly with an ink pad. So no dauber sponges this time, just ink pads. Now if you're worried about contaminating your inks, I'd say use dubbers for this. This way, if any contamination occurs, you would have contaminated a dubber, not an ink pad. I am not worried about contaminating my Hollyhock ink pad here. I am applying a darker color over a lighter one. And even if some yellow does transfer onto the Hollyhock ink pad, it's such a small amount, it's not going to matter. Now, I accidentally dropped my ink pad there and kind of ruined this background, but I still wanted to show you the end result. So this one ended up having harsh defined lines in between the colors. You can clearly see the line in between the yellow and the hollyhock. However, it's a fun way to add second color of ink to your backgrounds. So maybe if used with a similar color, it would look more pleasing to the eye. I went back to my last color combo and created another background with the same duckling and hollyhock colors, but I used my sponge dabbers to apply ink. Love the second option much, much better. So here's a quick look at all four of my backgrounds using two color inking technique. These look fun and not like my usual backgrounds. 
The next step is to create sentiments and combine them with the stamped backgrounds and turn them into cards. I'm going to use a hard die and die cut three hearts out of this white cardstock to house my sentiments using my die cutting machine and quickly cutting those out. I also need to die cut a word friend and I'm using gold mirror cardstock for this. Now if you don't have this type of cardstock you can just gold foil a piece of white paper and die cut that. So I'm going to die cut this word three times and I also forgot to mention that I added a strip of double sided adhesive to the back of this gold cardstock to make my die cut sticky. I love using scrapbook adhesive adhesive sheets or can Oliver's uh, stick it to create sticky die cuts. It makes life so much easier. So I'm going to be stamping my sentiment next and I'm using Simon's mini U stamp set and versifying onyx black ink. First I'm going to place the hue stamp on my cutting mat and I'm taking the grid lines of my cutting mat into consideration and sort of centering the stamp there and then going to place the clear block on top so I'm going to mount my stamp but I'm also going to match up the grid lines of my clear block with the grid lines of my cutting mat to sort of make it easier make it easier for me to stamp in the future. Next, going to align my die cut heart on my cutting mat, again taking the grid lines into consideration. Next, we'll match up the grid lines of my cutting mat with the clear block grid lines and we'll stamp the U onto the heart. I'm going to stamp the other two hearts in the same way. This time I can be sure that I have it centered on the die cut. I need to stamp the second part of my sentiment. You are wonderful, and I have a stamp that says, are a wonderful friend, but I don't need the friend part of it, so I'm just going to cut it off with my scissors. Now I have a sentiment that I need. I'm going to repeat the same steps in terms of mounting it onto my clear block and centering it using the grid lines, and I'm going to stamp it onto all three of my hearts under the stamped U. Now it's time to play with our gold die cut friend word. I need to turn this die cut into a single friend, so I'm going to carefully cut off the S and cut off the little ending of the letter S and we'll reposition the ending on the letter D. You won't be even able to tell that this die cut was changed and manipulated, but if it bugs you that there is a cut line, which really isn't that visible especially on this gold cardstock, you can put something like a little die cut heart over it to hide it. I also decided I needed to trim my stamped panels slightly, so I used the largest die from the stitched rectangle set from Simon and adhered my panels over yellow card bases from Hero Arts. I wanted to foam mount the die cut hearts onto my cards to create some dimension on my projects, so I used a sheet of white fun foam, covered it in scrapbook adhesives adhesive sheets on both sides and die cut identical hearts out. Next, I use my scissors and carefully trim the hearts to make them just a tiny bit smaller. These don't have to be perfect, but it's better if they are a little bit smaller in size than the die cut that goes on top of, the, of these foam hearts. This way, foam will not be visible in your project. So I die cut those and use them to foam mount my hearts on top of my panels. Now, I did not add any foam adhesive under the ends of the letters F and D, so these swirls were just sort of hanging there in the air. So what I decided to do, I kind of pushed them down to my base panel and adhered just the ends of these. I also embellished my cards using clear droplets from Pretty Pink Posh and also die cut a few additional hearts out of that gold cardstock and adhered them onto my projects just to add another pop of gold. You'll notice I placed a heart over a die cut line there just to show you how you can cover that up. So that finished my today's projects. I hope you enjoyed this fun two color background stamping technique and we'll give it a try. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to click the thumbs up button and if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.